So first of all, for this lesson, what I'd like to say is I don't know why it starts at 5, 6, and then it goes to 3. So let's correct that numbering here that we have. So this should be a 1. That should be a 2. And then the rest follow. All right. So first, we're just going to get a little practice expanding this. So um, we're going to notice that there are numbers in front of the variables here for the first of each of these binomials. Okay, and what we're going to end up seeing is we're going to end up seeing a trinomial that has a number that is not 1. So it's something other than 1. And this is how it happens. So we're going to multiply this 5e times this 2e. What do we end up with? 10e squared. And then we're going to take this 5e and multiply it by this 4. What do we end up getting? 20e. And then this 3 times this 2e gives us plus 6e. And then 3 times 4 is plus 12. Okay, so what are we doing at this step now? Combining those and we get 10e squared plus 26e plus 12. Okay, so this is completely expanded and simplified. All right, so now let's have a look at the next question where we've got now here, see, notice that we've got the t in the front here and we've got the t over here. We're just going to multiply it through, expand it exactly as we see it, using the same rules of distributed property. Nothing changes. So 6t times 7 is 42t. And then 6t times 5t is, it's a negative 5t, so that's, minus 30t squared, all right? And then negative 9 times 7 is negative 63. And then negative 9 times negative 5t is plus positive 45t. All right, so you have to just take a little bit extra care here. And notice that a term with a t is here and a term with a t is here. So that's what we're going to be combining. And we could also um, rearrange it so that we have our t squared term written first. So what is the value of our t squared term? Negative 30 t squared. And then if we combine our t's, we've got 42 and 45 all together, that's? So plus 87t, and then we are going to have our 63. All right, so now that's just some practice expanding. Now what we're going to do is we're going to factor. We're going to look at this guy and see, okay, how can I possibly break this up into two brackets or two factors and I'm going to have um, a number here with a g, a number here with a g, uh, a plus or a minus, plus or a minus, and then a, a different number here and here. That's the format. That's the format of what we're going to end up with. Okay. So I'm going to teach you something called decomposition. All right, now other people have, there's many different methods of actually doing this. Uh, some people write, there, there's a crisscross method that you, that can be done. If you know that method, then great, go ahead and do that. I'm going to teach you decomposition uh, just because it's, it's, it's an algorithm that works every single time and there's little to no guessing involved, okay? So if you just follow the procedure each time, it works always. <clears throat> okay, um, I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take another piece of paper and I'm going to go through and I'm going to write out all the steps of decomposition. 
and I'll use this example to do it with. And I just feel like I need a little bit more room. So let's look at decomposition. Okay, <coughs> so decomposition. So let's say you have, uh, you've got 4g squared plus 11g plus 6. Now this is for questions that have this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where c is the constant term and a is the number in front of the x squared value. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to multiply the a value and the c value together. So in this case, what do we end up getting? We end up getting 4 times 6, and they're both positive. So what, what's the value for that? 20, 24. Okay, so I take my A value, which is right here, and my C value, which is right there, I multiply them together and I get 24. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the factors of 24. So what are all the factors of 24 that I can list? So I can go 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, uh, is there a 4 times something? 4 times 6, is there a 5 times something? No. Uh, how about, oh, so now I just end up back at 6, right? And then I go back up the list and it's everything in reverse? So I can stop here. Okay, so what I have to look for in this common, in these, in these, in this list, I have to look for the combination that has, any guesses? What do you think? That sum up to 11. So I need to look for which sums up to positive 11. So what sums up to the middle term here? Which one of these? You're gonna, you think it's this one here? 3 and the 8? Now, are they both positive or one is one negative? Are they both negative? What's the deal with the signs? They're both positives. Why do you think that we should choose plus 3 and plus 8 as our combination? Because they sum up to 11 and what else? They multiply to plus 24. Okay, I should put a plus in front of that 11. Okay, so this is what we're going to use. Now this is where the decomposition part comes in. The decomposition part comes in next. So let's say we've got, so we've got, I'm going to rewrite our question, 4g squared plus 11g plus 6. Now what we're going to do is we're going to decompose the middle term. What does decompose mean? Break down. So we're going to break down the 11g so that it's not 11g anymore. It is 3 plus 8. Okay? So instead of 11g, I'm going to write, everything else is the same. I'm going to write 4g squared, and instead of the 11g, I'm going to write 3g plus 8g. And then I'm going to write my plus 6. So you see right here, this is what used to be, this is what used to be 11g. Okay, that's where the word, that's where the term decomposition comes from for this. Okay, now, the next step is to 
And once you get going, this goes a lot faster. It's slow the first time, but I'd rather take it slow first and then, uh, you know, have you guys follow along instead of going too fast, right? So what you're going to do now is you're going to group the first two terms and you're going to group the second two terms. So group first two, group second two terms. Okay. Now we're going to take a common factor out of the first two terms and a common factor out of the second two terms. So what can you tell me is common with these two first terms? Just a G. Anything else? No, right? So we're going to factor a G out. And then what's left if I factor a G out of this first group? 4G and then plus 3. Okay, now I have to do the same thing with this second set here. I need to find something that is in common with both of these two. So what's in common with both of these two terms? What number? A two? So if I take a two out of here and a two out of here, okay. So is it going to be a plus 2 or a minus 2? So I take this sign, see the sign right here? And I put it right there, okay? So make sure you bring that sign down, it's important. And now let's factor the 2 out, and then what do we end up with if I factor a 2 out of this second set? Four G plus three. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. What do you notice? What do you notice about this and this? They're exactly the same. That's how you know you're right so far is those brackets have to be exactly the same each time when you do this. So what happens is this makes up one of your brackets. So you've got 4G plus 3 as one of your brackets. And then any ideas of what your second bracket's going to be made of? So we're taking this and we're factoring it out. And what's left here when we do that? G plus 2. That's your second bracket. So if we were to take this and multiply it back out to do our check, we should end up with our original question. Okay. Now, if we do this again and again, it's going to go a lot faster. The more we do this, the more practice we get, the factor, faster this factoring is going to go. Otherwise, it's slow if you're always thinking about what you're going to do next. So let's take some time and let's uh, practice with the other questions and then we'll, we'll go. Okay, so let's go over B, and I won't write like every single step out, and you'll just kind of see what the thought process is and uh, uh, what the questions are that you're writing out for yourself and, and doing. Okay, so for here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at 6, and I'm look at look at the negative 10. What am I going to do with those two numbers? Multiply them. So I'm going to do some scratch work on the side here, okay? So what is 6 times negative 10? What does it equal? Negative 60. Okay, and then what am I going to do with those uh, numbers? I'm going to take, I'm going to find all the factors of negative 60 that do what? Sum up to negative 7. Okay, 
So let's list my factors. 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, uh, 6 times 10, uh, 7, no, 8, no, 9, no, 10, then I'm back up to 10. Okay, so that's my list. I've exhausted all my options. Which one of those is going to fit the bill? 5 times 12. Okay, why does 5 times 12 fit the bill? Because which one has to be negative in order for it to equal negative 7, negative 12? So I'm going to choose plus 5 and negative 12. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this negative 7m in terms of that 5 and that 12. So 6m squared minus 12m plus 5m minus 10. Okay, now we're going to group the first two and group the second two. What's common in this first group? 6m. So what happens when I divide 6m out of here? What's left? m. And what's left when I uh, factor out a 6m out of here? Minus 2. Okay. Now, you see this plus sign right here? I need to write that plus sign right here. Whatever sign is here, that drops down and follows. Okay? And now what's in common amongst these two guys here? My second two terms. 5. So what's left? M minus 2. What do I notice right here about this and this? They're the same. So that makes up your first bracket. So now your first bracket is M minus 2. And then what is your second bracket composed of? 6M plus 5. Perfect. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah? Okay. Sweet. All right. How about uh, we take a second and try the next question? Okay. So uh, give you a heads up about this one if you're going to try this one. This one has, what do you notice? It's 24, 20, and 24. There's a common factor among all three of those terms. What is the common factor among all three of those? So you have to factor out that common factor first, and then you're going to do decomposition. Okay? It goes a lot easier if you do that. So let's pause, and then we'll come back. All right, so let's finish up for A and B now. Uh, so here for this one, the first step, what is the first step, folks? Take the 8 and the negative 5, multiply them together, and what do we end up getting when we do that? So 8 times negative 5 equals negative 40. So now we're going to list all the factors of negative 40. So I'm just going to do the positive and then worry about that after. So 1 times 40, 2 times 20. Uh, is there a 3 times? No. Is there a 4 times? Okay, what's the 4 times? 10. Is there a 5 times? What's the 5 times? 8. Is there a 6 times? 7. And now we're back up to 8, right? Okay, so do any of these combinations fit the bill of adding up to negative 18? And which one does that? 2 and 20. So how do I have to arrange my 2 and my 20 in order to give me negative 18 when I add them together? Negative 20. So negative 20, positive 2. So we're going to have our 8p squared plus 2p minus 20p minus 5. Okay, and now group these two first guys together and I end up with, what's the common factor here? 2P 
And then what's left over when I take out a 2p out of this 8p squared? 4p plus, and now what is 2p divided by 2p? 1. Okay? So if it's exactly the same thing, make sure you put a 1 in there. You need that placeholder. Okay, so now for the second group, what's the common factor between negative 20 and negative 5? Negative 5. So you see this sign? It ends up being the same as the sign that's out here. Okay? And then, excuse me, what's left when I have uh, negative 20p divided by negative 5? 4p. And what is negative 5 divided by negative 5? Plus 1. Okay. Now, what do you notice? I've got a bracket here and a bracket here that look exactly the same. Woohoo! That's a good thing, right? Okay, that makes your first bracket 4p plus 1, and your second bracket is 2p minus 5. Look good? Yeah? So that's the answer to. 4a. Now, do you possibly have this in the reverse order? And that's okay if you do. If you have your brackets exactly the same, each bracket has to look exactly the same. But if you have it in the reverse order, that's just fine. Okay, and now let's do the last one. So we noticed here that there is a common factor. What's the greatest common factor among all of them? I think we mentioned four earlier. Yeah? So take out your greatest common factor out first. And then you end up with this. Now we're going to run decomposition on this bracket here that we have, on that trinomial. Okay? Same procedure as before. Make sure you continue to write that 4 out in front of everything that we're doing. Okay? So. We're going to go 6 times 6. What's 6 times 6? 36. It happens to be a negative 36. Uh, what are all the factors of 36? 1 times 36. 2 times 18. 3 times 12. 4 times 9. 5 times, nope, 6 times 6. What's the combination I'm looking for? adds up to negative 5, which one of those does it? This one here, the 4 and the 9? Okay, so I need a negative 9. So let's decompose it. So uh, positive 4h and minus 9h minus 6. And now what's, I need to group these two guys and I need to group these two and take out their common factor. So I'm going to write my 4 out in front. And now, what's the common factor among these first two? 2 H? Yeah? 2 H. And what's left over inside here? 3 H and plus 2. Okay. And now, the second part here, this minus, is going to be because of this minus right here. What's the common factor among this 9 and 6? 3. And uh, what's left over? 3h and? So what's negative 6 divided by negative 3? Plus 2. Okay. So just make sure each bracket you open has a closing bracket. Okay, so now finally our answer, we've got our 4, that's this 4 from here, and then I'm going to open a bracket, my first bracket's going to be my 3h plus 2, and then my second bracket's going to be made up of 2h minus 3. All right, so there's a little more work in that one, but the procedure is the same. You just have to remember to keep track of that 4 that you factored out in the beginning to run through. Okay, so there you have it, folks, decomposition.